All right, welcome back. Today we're going to do another Forge video. Um, you may have watched the last one. Brutal Frost Lord is again one of our first picks. Educator's Gavel. Cards can't leave the Cursed Player's Void. This is a good market card for Constructed in the right metagame. Not a good Forge card. Cat Burglar. I actually did not click. I don't think I actually clicked to draft that. I just hovered my mouse over to show that. I did not hit click. I don't know why that happened. Maybe it was sensitive. I was going to pick the Frost Lord. Not that this is a bad card. Um, but it's a bit more narrow. Alright, that's kind of awkward. Um, I meant to pick Frost Lord and just hover over that one so you could see it. I guess I have to be more careful. Char is a good uh, little fast bow removal. Helps out against aggro. Like, remember, we lost that last game to a 7-1 giant quick draw. That would help there. Uh, it's better than Urgent Missive. Combust is good, but gets a lot better if we already have, like, a Renin Drone, cheap one-drop set up, or a Cogulator, maybe. Um, I do think it's close. Overall, I think I'm leaning a little bit towards Char this early. That could be wrong, but I lean towards Char here. And it also can go face. We might end up drafting a very aggressive Stone Scar list at this point. Fallen Oni. Enemy player discards the top unit of the deck. Not very good. That red Rampager, 6 4 for 6, is kind of a filler card. 5 4 for 6 is a little harder influence, but Exalted on your turn is actually a pretty good card. We'll pick that one. 0 2 for 3. Plus one attack, Relic Weapon for each of your units. This card is actually quite good. Rebel Sharpshooter, very reasonable. 3-3 three, three for 3 if you get weapons. It becomes very hard to block with that quick draw. Blackguard Sidearm goes on any small unit. Goes on our deadly unit quite nicely. Deadly quick draw is uh, hard to block to say the least. So I think it's actually pretty close between the two removal. Uh, between the removal and the, uh, the sidearm. I don't know what our unit count is going to look like um, and how many early aggressive units we have as far as maybe playing this on three. Um, I've had definitely good success with it in the past though. Definitely not a bad pick. None of these are bad picks. Um, but again, we already have a deadly unit and this is just a good weapon in general for aggressive lists. I'll go with it. We can pick a War Painter, 1-4 for 3, Inspire units get plus 1 attack. Um, decently good unit. Uh, scavenging Vulture, 1-1 one, one flying for 2, oftentimes a 2-1 flyer for 2. Fairly good 2-drop, not phenomenal. We already have uh, a 6-drop, I'd rather focus on my earlier units. Warpainter is a little bit of a better defensive card against some of those good aggressive decks. So I think I would prefer um, Warpainter over Scavenging Vulture um, in general. Plus we know the AI has some decks that are in temper and things. I'll go with Warpainter. Piercing Grief. Um, not exactly the greatest 2-drop, but it does give a little anti-aggro support. It's a lot better if we had a card like Dark Return, so when this thing dies, it gets Destiny in the Void and you get a free card out of it. Um, Unity Within, one of the units in each unit that shares a type with it, plus one, plus one. That's too narrow for a Forge deck that isn't going to be tribal-based. Ghost Form, Life Steal and Unblockable this turn. Um, a nice way to push through for damage and um, gain a little life back, potentially. I don't really like Piercing Grief that much, because it's mostly just amounts to gain 6 life, sometimes deal 3 damage. It's possible that the AI doesn't realize at end of turn we have to sacrifice it, and takes a trade-off with it, which would be fantastic for us. So maybe it's worth taking on those merits. I've never played Piercing Grief in a Forge. 
But I just don't think ghost form is really good enough to pick this early. I think I'll try the grief. Urgent missive, sacrifice a unit to play 2-1-1 cultists. We don't have any units like Recogulator or Grenadine Drone or any Entomb units that would be better to lose one, willing to lose one to just to get two, as it doesn't really seem all that good. So it's between a 2-1 charge for two or a 2-1 that makes all of our units and our sidearm bigger. I think this is a pretty easy war brush. Temper. Decent little removal card. Affliction, another kind of okay removal card. Um, it can be used to stall out a bigger flyer too if you want. So it's a little more versatile in that regard than Temper. However, Temper is a fast spell, and buffing the top unit by one is quite a bit better. So we're going to go as Temper. Ghost form again, not really that impressive. Dark Betrayal, choose a unit in any player's hand to steal and play it. It gets charged, sacrifice at the end of the turn. You know, like in Forge, that's probably not going to be good enough. I can imagine a, the kind of the nut scenario in um, Ranked where maybe you could uh, grab an Akaria, charge it, and then sacrifice it, but pretty narrow card. Tumble Bang is not too bad though. 3 1 for 3 and Tomb get a little ramp. I can envision playing that on 3, attacking on 4, um, getting a block, and then um, being able to drop a 6 drop or something like that. Shrine to Carve It. Units have plus 2 attack, charge, and lifesteal if you have sacrificed a unit this turn. That's pretty good. Um, however, we don't have sacrifice effects. Maybe we'll be able to draw one, though. I already have a cat burglar, and I think I haven't crafted my shrines yet. I haven't gotten around to playing that deck. Oh, no, I have five. Alright, so that's not a consideration, then. I already have plenty. Um, factory quota. Kind of a market card. I suppose in the right meta if you're running a burn deck, but generally this card is going to see no play anywhere. Um, so we'll take another cap regular. It's a perfectly good card. Maybe we'll be lucky and face an armory deck in there too and then just completely trash them. But yeah, carve it would be really good if I knew I was going to get a sacrifice. Um, I think. We actually have seen a couple commons offered that have sacrifice effects. But, at this stage of the draft, I'm not really sure if we're going to see them again. You know, though, it's so powerful, though, if we do draw a sacrifice. I think I'm going to go for it. It's maybe a bit of a gamble, but both of those, uh, the one-cost spell sack a unit and get two one ones, I believe those were both common. So there's a decent chance we can see it again. Let's take Shrine. Two to quick draw for two with a fate, which will help hit our influence. Um, mostly it's double fire that we need, so that's not all that useful in that regard. Um, but still, a two to quick draw is probably better than a one one deadly given all the pings, despite the AI's. Uh, bit of a poor play against Steadily. And Rage is just, plus one plus one is just not quite enough for a fast spell. Even though one is certainly not, not the worst card against the AI. But I just don't think that's quite enough and I'd rather get a decently good aggressive two drop. Ooh, that's a legendary right there. Shrine to carve it. Again, um, I really don't want to get two of these if we don't get Sacrifice Effect, because it's going to do nothing. So I think that's a bit too risky. Cat Burglar may well be better than Jack. I'm not sure. Let me see. Six costs seven, seven deadly. No, Jack is way better. That's a much bigger stat line than I remember it being. I haven't played that card in a while. When a unit goes the enemy void, it gets void bound. Tribute kill enemy unit. Yeah, that card's just busted. That card's busted.
Ooh, Kindle and Carver. Exhaust and Sacrifice to draw a card. Now we have a little shrine set up. Um, enemy player discards the top two from their deck. Not that great. This card's quite good. This is a very good two drop, but given that we have a shrine, I think I want to take take this and um, hopefully set that up. Plus, um, tribute it makes it easier to get the tribute for Jack. Ravenous Storm Beast, you may sacrifice another unit. Great card in its own right, and again, synergy with Shrine. Boy, if we get enough sacrifices, I, I might actually have regretted taking Jack over Shrine. Um, probably not, though. That card's just a beast. When one or more strangers attacks, their owner plays a 1 1 Cultist. Um. That's not great. Higher Mage. 3 1 for 2 is fine. And Dark Return is very, 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 very good. Just in general. And getting back a Jack or getting back a Destiny Grief. Very, very good. So it's not really even another option here. Premiums. We can get another. Six cost dark return and lifesteal, very good card. A useless unity within, or a marginal six drop. Again, no choice. Burning Core Drake is very, very good flyer. Flying Reckless, 3 1 for 3. Mastery is very easy to get with weapons, and just in general, that's a fine card. Amethyst Accolade is another good one. Kills aggressive drops, and it's an okay ish stat line. Not really, but. The summon is good. Granite Acolyte is very, very good. The plus two attack Iron Sword goes well on Makar. Um, it goes well on uh, like a bigger Thorn Beast. It definitely goes well on War Painters because of the higher health. Um, but overall, Burning Core is definitely going to be the pick. Unfamiliar Interloper, fixes for Influence, it's a 2-drop, that's good. Um, I think we have enough 2-drops right now that we're likely to be able to pick up one before the end of the draft, so I don't think we're desperate for that. 2-3 um, three for 3, pay 5 to make them discard the top 2. That card is actually not as bad as you might think it is, given the stat line. Um, the mill actually can be very relevant. Um, some of the time. This is a 3-1 flying for 5. Sacrifice another unit to gain health. Equal to number of units in your void and give it that much health. Um, and again, another sacrifice for shrine is very nice. And a 3-1 flyer on its own for 5 is not the end of the world. Like We know that 3-3 three, three flyers for 5 Injustice, I've seen plenty of play and draft. So, that plus the upside of hitting Shrine makes it worth the pick. We can get a 2 1 Relic Weapon, which is pretty good. 3 2 Left Right Target Collar, which is a very good 2 drop. Uh, Minus 2 drop, get Quick Draw. I think I'm going to have a hard time passing a second Dark Return, though. I hope we're able to get another 2 drop later. But, even if we aren't, I just... Dark Return is so good. Uh, that's a very good 2-drop. Alright, well, this is a good Relic Weapon, but it's definitely between Target Collar and Dark Return. I think, ordinarily, it's a Snap Dark Return, if, you had, if I had a couple more 2-drops. It's very, very close, given that we only have three, but we also have a Kindling Carver, we have good three drops, so I think we can still afford to take the Dark Return. It's so good, so strong. Unimpressive six drop, pretty good five drop. Give one of your units plus one attack, flying and lifesteal at the end of the turn, sacrifice it. End of the turn, sacrificing isn't as good because we're not able to get a second, we don't have a second attack step or anything. 
So you need to be sacking free combat to get advantage of uh, plus two attack charge and lifesteal. So that's not going to be a good sacrifice effect. We'll take Levin Mountain. And here, I almost don't even need to read this card, but I'll read it out to you. Four cost, enemy player sacrifices an uncursed unit of their choice, discards card from the top of their deck, either do its attack, or a premium two drop, or a mediocre one drop. Treachery, two damage to the enemy player, discard a unit or sight. I don't think there's any sights that are relevant. This card is not that good in general. Xenon Cultist. When one of your other units dies, the unit gets plus two, plus two. That's actually a very tempting card to take, given that we have a Surgeon Shaw and two Dark Returns. So basically, when that unit comes back, it's plus three, plus three. You can imagine having a Burning Core out, a Xenon Cultist out. They go and ping this. You Dark Return. Now it's a 6-4, I believe. Thunder of Wings is a very, very good aggressive card. It's actually gauntlet playable if you're running enough 1-drops. That's the key. I run it in a Rakano deck with 12 1-drops. We do not have any 1-drops, and we only have um, 4 2-drops. So I'm not really itching to grab a card that's more likely to cost 5. Even though 4-2 Dragon... Flying in charge for five is actually fine. I think, um, on balance, given the added synergy with the Dark Returns, I want to go for Cultist here. Try to build a really powerful synergistic deck. Uh, Switchblade would have been better um, if we had had the two drop that granted Quick Draw. We do, however, have um, Blackguard Sidearm and Surgeon Saw which both will give this plus two plus two. And it's a two drop which fits well into a curve. So I think I give it the nod over the Granite Acolyte. Makar's Blood Wolf, two, three, lifesteal for three. Mastery six, plus two plus two. That's a pretty decent unit. Urgent Missive, sacrifice a unit to play two on one cultists. That's the common I was talking about. Um, but at this point, we have a number of um, sacrifice effects that I didn't pick the second shrine. So I think I would rather pick um, the lifesteal effect rather than uh, the 2 3 that mills. And the last pick, wow, yeah, another rare. 1 2 for 2 when you draw your second card in a turn, plus 2 power. That's not going to happen very often. Maybe at nightfall or something. Pay 4 to give one of your other units plus 4 attack and overwhelm this turn. That's certainly not too bad. 3-3 uh, three, three lifesteal for 3, which is a great rate. However, can't block. Someone swap another unit's attack and health. So do we have any units that are really going to want to be swapped? Um, War Painter, maybe if it already has the quick draw relic on it. Um... Nothing else that really comes to mind is greatly benefiting from a swap. But again, Corrupted can sometimes be useful. And maybe the AI has like a 7-1 quick draw for 2 that I want to swap to be a 1-7 so we don't take as much damage. Then there's a 5-5 five five charge for 6, which is fine. Your other fire units have plus 1 attack. Um, I think our late game is pretty great as it is. Jack is... 7-7 seven, seven deadly for 6 doesn't even need any other text on it. This card's going to be so fun if we can get to play it. I would rather take the Blood Wolf here than any of these. Alright, that is the drafting portion of the video. Stand by for the games.